Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this evening is from our Old Testament reading, from Exodus chapter 12. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations, as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. This is our text. Dear friends, sisters, and brothers in Christ Jesus. Do you have, uh, any of you have childhood memories of this time of year, of Holy Week and Easter? I can, uh, being a, I was a pastor's kid myself, which meant that, I, I, you know, there was no getting out of any of the services, right? We got dragged to all of them. Uh, but those services, I don't know, they, they left a mark. I, there's something about, about going to church at night, right, when it's dark, that, that leaves an impression. And I remember the, the darkness outside, um, the smell of, of blossoms in the air outside the church. I remember the, all those, those beautiful Lenten hymns uh, that, that we have inherited. Um, I remember Good Friday and the darkening of the church. I remember getting up, going with my dad on, on Holy Saturday to help set things up at church for, for Easter Sunday. Uh, and I remember getting up very, very early on, on Easter Sunday uh, for, for or a sunrise service and sneaking some chocolate before the sun was up. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason that we, you know, at the holidays, we make, we make plans with family, right? We have... We have dinners and we have gatherings, right? So that we can, make, we can make new memories, right? And we can carry those memories forward and, and pass those memories on to the next generation. And of course, that's one of the cruel things about this, this current moment that we live in is that it has been hard for us uh, to, to have the kinds of gatherings uh, that we long for, right? So our memories of, I don't know, maybe we won't remember the past you know, year at all, um, maybe that would be good. Um, but it's been hard, right, to, to make the kind of memories that we want to make. And uh, so it's one of the great blessings, right, as, as vaccine is, is rolling out, that, that we can once again look forward to those, those kinds of memories and, and, and making the kind of memories that we want to make and not the kind that, that life uh, tends to impose upon us. Speaking of holidays, of holiday plans, and of memories, our Old Testament reading this evening uh, from Exodus is essentially a set of holiday plans given to Moses by God himself on the cusp of Israel's liberation from Egypt. Holiday plans that are meant to teach the people to remember. Now, what a strange holiday that first Passover must have been. A meal of roast meat and bitter herbs, eaten by family and friends, dressed for travel, a festival celebrated in the snug safety of a home marked by blood while death and terror stalked the night outside. But the Lord's instructions make clear that this is not to be a one-off event. Rather, he says, this day shall be for you a memorial day, this day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. As a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. This strange 
feast of meat and bitter herbs and unleavened bread is to become an annual holiday of remembrance. An opportunity to gather around the table with friends and relatives with the next generation and to answer again the question, why is this night different from all other nights? To tell again how on this night, God brought them out of bondage with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. It is, God says, to be a memorial day, a day for remembering. Because we are what we remember. Think about it. Our hopes, our fears, our loves, our sense of who we are, all these things are profoundly shaped by our memories, conscious and unconscious. I read a, an article, this was fascinating. Uh, a group of researchers uh, fed people radioisotopes uh, and then tracked, then tracked the movements of the radioactive particles throughout the body to sort of see right, what happens with, with the stuff that you eat. And based on the movement of those particles, they estimated that, that the human body replaces something like 98% of its constituent atoms every year. So think about what that means, right? Think about all those childhood events that you remember, right? You were there, right? Virtually nothing of the physical material you was present at those events is present in the you who is sitting here this evening. In the immortal words of Keanu Reeves, whoa. <laughs> Right? And yet you remember those events. And so you could say that your memories are you in a way that even the physical stuff that you are made of is not you. You are what you remember. And what's true of individuals is also true of communities. And so the people of Israel are going to be defined by what they remember. They're going to be founded and constituted as a people who remember that the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob has rescued them and made them his own. See, and this isn't the kind of remembering that, that merely recalls something that happened in the past to some other people. This, rather, is the remembering of faith, which brings the people into a present relationship with the living God. It's the kind of remembering that will allow generations as yet unborn someday to say, not with our fathers did the Lord make this covenant, but with us. Now, of course, the sad fact of the matter, and Scripture bears this out repeatedly, is that the people of Israel, who were called to be a people defined by remembering, are very often in the course of their history a people defined by forgetting. As we read the Bible, it seems like no sooner have the people settled in the promised land than in The frequent observation of Scripture, quote, the people of Israel did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God. And they serve other gods instead. Right? We talked about this in Bible study just the other week, right? This is the cycle that happens over and over again, right? The people forget and fall into catastrophe 
and God delivers them. Now, of course, this does not happen to the people of Israel, and I want to be very clear about this. This does not happen to Israel because the people of Israel are worse than other people. This happens to the people of Israel precisely because they are exactly like all other people in this respect. Because we forget. We forget. We forget what God has done for us. We forget what he's done for us in our own lives, let alone what Jesus did for us on the cross. And why do we forget? Because we're busy? Or maybe because we're too comfortable much of the time? Or we're too distracted, right, by the shiny things in front of us? We forget. We forget. And so thanks be to God that we have a God who remembers. On Mount Horeb, when God called Moses to be his servant to the children of Israel, Moses asked God what his name was in case somebody asked. And God said, It often gets translated as, I am who I am. But what it actually says is, I will be who I will be. In other words, I think what God is saying is that he will make himself known through what he is about to do. And one of the ways that God reveals himself to us through what he does, one of the ways that he defines himself is by what he remembers. At the beginning of Exodus, in Exodus 2, after we hear about the people's uh, bondage and, and their hard labor, we read, And God heard their groaning, and God remembered. God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And when Scripture says that God remembers, I don't think it... No, it certainly does not imply that God had momentarily forgotten and then it, you know, it slipped his mind and then, you know, he remembered again, right? God is not like me in that respect, Um, right? Because all things are constantly present to God's attention. When Scripture says that God remembered, I think what it means is that, that God's remembrance is about to to manifest in the world, right? It means not that God forgot and that he remembered, but God is now going to do something about what he always remembers. God remembers his promises. People forget, but God remembers. And when the whole world had forgotten God, when the whole world groaned in, in the bondage to forgetting, God remembered his promises. He remembered his promises to Adam and Eve, to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, to the people of Israel, to the prophets. And he sent his own son into the world to set us free from the fearful consequences of our forgetfulness. And so we gather tonight in the shelter of this house marked by the blood of the Lamb to celebrate this holiday meal, this Passover, to remember why this night is different from all other nights. This night on which Jesus took, celebrated that ancient Passover feast and gave it a new meaning. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink this cup in remembrance of me. This is not the kind of remembering that merely recalls an event that happened long ago to somebody else. No, it is not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with us. And on this night, Jesus feeds you with his own body and blood so that you may remember that he died for you, to free you from your sins, to free you from your forgetting, so that you may proclaim his death until he comes. And however often you may have forgotten him in your life, this meal is a pledge and a reminder that he will never, ever forget you. Even if someday, in the feebleness of your flesh, you may forget your own name. Even though the atoms of your physical body may return to the dust and the world may forget your story. God will remember. He will remember you. And he will remember his promise made to you in this meal. And as God remembers, so you will be. And he will bring you out with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. And he will set you in that promised land where there will be no more forgetting to celebrate the the great holiday meal the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom, which has no end. In Jesus' name, amen.